Hi, my name is Olori Godwin. Welcome to Energy Economics. Today we shall be continuing our discussion of Prusa Equilibrium. If this is the first video that you are seeing, uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll leave the links to other videos that we've covered in the description of this particular video, so you might want to check uh, those out. But I don't think you'll be missing too much anyway. Copter glass production function. So what is the production function? A production function shows the mathematical relationship between input and output. That's, it's as simple as that. So we now have different types of production functions. We have the copper glass production function. We have the Leontief production function as well as a host of uh, several others. So let's just come to, let's just discuss uh, the class straight up. So a copper glass production function is simply expressed as this. Okay, y equals a k alpha l then uh, beta. So we have y equals output. K is capital, A is the total factor productivity, which is a measure of efficiency, L is labor, alpha is output elasticity of capital, and beta is the output elasticity of um, labor. So I don't think I really need to explain what output is, what capital is, and what our labor is. But what is the total factor productivity? That simply measures efficiency of the inputs uh, that are uh, being used. Some, if you check some textbooks, they might uh, refer to A as a technology. Some might just call it efficiency, and who knows? Some could probably bring uh, the two uh, together. So, uh, but uh, generally, it's simply the total factor productivity, and it is telling us it really measures the amount of growth in output that is not as a result of the growth in the input in this uh, particular model. That is, when output grows, when output grows, and we subtract the impact, we subtract, we. Uh, remove the impact of the growth in capital and growth in labor in that output. Whatever we have left, left represents our total factor uh, productivity, which is uh, A. Now, what is output elasticity of capital? Output elasticity of capital is this alpha here. So alpha tells us what happens to output if capital changes by 1%. So that is what it simply does. It tells us what happens to Y when capital changes by 1%. And that is quite parallel to what we have here. So beta, which is the output elasticity of labor, tells us what happens to Y when labor changes by 1%? So labor might uh, increase by 1% and it might, uh, and it might reduce by 1%. So that, that's about that. It's not, uh, they are not things that are difficult and um, they are not difficult to commit to memory. So here we, have, we now have to talk about returns to scale. You see, uh, this uh, one good thing about a copper glass production function is uh, simply that it enables us to uh, know the returns to scale as uh, simply as possible. And that is simply uh, obtained when we check all the values when it, when we sum up the values on, of alpha and beta. So when we sum them up, they have different they have different uh, what, we, what do we call it now? They are, they, are, they give different results and then they have different meanings respect uh, with respect to returns to scale. So when alpha plus beta equals one, we have rest constant returns to scale. Constant returns to scale. And what is uh, what does that mean? That simply means that if the if all the inputs here here we have two inputs. Okay, if this input and the capital and labor, if they are changed by the same proportion, the output will also change by the same proportion. So that's just it. So a proportional change in capital and labor at the same time will lead to a proportional change in Y. Now, for example, let's say there is a doubling of the input, that is, instead of having K and um, L, we now have 2K and 2L. So we are definitely going to have 2Y. Okay, so if we double the two inputs at the same time, we're having a doubling of the output. So that is what constant returns uh, to scale means. So that is, and that is where alpha plus beta equals a 1. So this one is 0 0.5, this one is 0 0.5, that is just 1. This one is 0 0.45, this one is 0 0.55, this one is 0 0.3, this one is 0 0.7, whatever it is, as long as it gives us 1. Now, the second one is where alpha plus beta is lesser than 1. And when alpha plus beta is lesser than 1, there is a decreasing returns to, to scale. Now, that does not simply mean that the total product is not increasing. That doesn't mean that the total output is not increasing. What decreasing returns to scale simply means is that if there is a proportionate change in the input uh, that is being used uh, to produce whatever commodity that is being produced, okay, the, the, the change in output will be less proportionate than the change in input. Now, let me just break all of that into uh, something simpler. Now, if K and L, if they change by 50%, okay, if a producer decides to vary its K and L uh, uh, by 50%, it increases them by 50%, okay, what is going to happen to Y? Y is going to increase by um, a percentage that is less than 50%. Okay, so output is increasing, but output might increase by 30%, 35%, 40%, 49%, and all of that. So that is what we simply mean when we are talking about decreasing returns to decreasing returns to scale. Now, increasing returns to scale, you are probably almost guessing what it means. 
In question with us to scale simply, of course, where a proportional change in uh, the input, the capital and labor, will lead to a more than proportional change in the output. Okay, so if a, if K and L should change by, uh, let's say, 50% again, output is going to change by something that's greater than 50%, by 70%, you know. And um, what I really want, one other thing I want you to note before we end this class is that um, Y is directly proportional to what we have here. So an increase in A will increase Y. An increase in capital will increase Y, and an increase in labor will uh, as well increase uh, as well increase Y, and vice versa. That is, a decrease in each and every one of them will also decrease um, our output. So for some reasons, the function is denoted. Like for some reasons, this particular of the uh, function is denoted as exhibiting a constant response to scale. That is, um, you must apply this in your textbooks that um, the Cobb-Douglas function is not written as this, but as this. Okay, so we have y equals a uh, k raised by alpha, and m equals 1 minus alpha. Okay, well, this might be beta, and then this might be 1 minus beta, as the case may be. Okay, so that simply means that by the time you sum up all of this, uh, this is um, alpha here, plus 1 minus alpha. So alpha cancels alpha, and then what we are left with is uh, 1. So you might um, be reading your text, and the only thing you'll be coming across is a Cobb Douglas uh, function that exhibits constant returns to scale. That is uh, that way for. Uh, some reasons now marginal product there's a way to there's a way to obtain marginal product from uh, this of course margin, what is uh, marginal product uh, marginal product is simply the change in total product as a result of a unit change in the input used now marginal product varies according to the amount of according to the number of units uh, of inputs that are available so if uh, since we are talking about capital and labor here so we'll be having the marginal product of capital and the marginal product of uh, labor so here y is equal to a a you know i've already mentioned that um, uh, the complex uh, function is usually uh, written in a way that exhibits constant uh, returns to scale so y equals a k alpha and l raised by one minus alpha so how do we get the marginal product from what i i, I de uh, defined that is the change in output that of course uh, because there is a change in there's a unit change in input use so it's going to be a dy uh, the essence we are looking for the marginal product of labor so we have change in y over change in l and that's equals you okay, know this is because we are differentiating with respect to with respect to l the one minus alpha comes uh, here from another uh, differentiation then um, alpha remains then k alpha uh, remains as well then we have l uh, since we are differentiating with respect to um uh, with, uh, to l so it is going to be one minus alpha minus r uh, one okay um just to refresh our memory so if y equals five x uh, squared for example you have to differentiate as to obtain the y okay the y the x so this becomes two uh into bracket five then x two minus one so but then we have then uh, x so that is what has happened here so we have one minus alpha coming here so we are not differentiating this we are not differentiating because it's not uh yeah, they are not L. So this L now minus one, just as we have a minus uh, one here. So what does that gives us? That gives us one minus alpha a k alpha. Then one already subtract one, so what we are left with is a minus alpha. So at the end of the day, we have one minus alpha a k alpha. Uh, recall from your mathematics class, if you have five uh, raised to my, uh, minus three, that is uh, simply one over five uh, raised to three, and so on and so forth. So that is how L raised to minus alpha became. Uh, the denominator that is it's it became one over l alpha okay so by the time we bring that to uh by the time we bring it and the k alpha together so l alpha becomes the denominator in that case so my number of label would now be written simply as um, one minus alpha a then this k k over l so k over l is in the bracket now then alpha is outside okay so one interesting thing is Look at the marginal. This is uh, we are trying to get the marginal product of labor, but here we see that capital happens to be the numerator or uh, the numerator here. So that is trying to tell us that um, for this fraction to rise, two things uh, should happen: labor should either decrease or capital should increase. But it is funny that we are trying to obtain the marginal product of labor, trying to get uh, how we are trying to get the additional contribution of a laborer, and then we are having capital here as a numerator. So that is simply telling us that. If capital should increase here, that is the numerator increase, the entire fraction increases at the marginal product of labor also increases, and that is a uh, kind of kind of weird. Okay, shouldn't they be substituted and so on and so forth? But 
that's just that's uh, that's just uh, what the uh, equation is uh, is telling us. And if you look at it, is there a business that you are going to? Is there a business that you know, or is there a firm that you know that only utilize, that only utilizes labor? In in one way or the other, there's going to be uh, capital. Okay, the building. Uh, the building, the machines, no matter how simple they are or complicated they are, and of course we are going to be having some workers there. So this is just simply telling us that for marginal product of labor to increase, uh, that can also be done when capital uh, increases. So when you give the number of laborers that you have available, when you, when you, when you equip them, okay, when you put them with um, um, stuff that they could use, uh, um, stuff that they could use to produce, when you equip them with that. What, what we are going to have is that uh, there's going to be an increase in the marginal product of uh, labor. So let's say we have um, laborers that are just that are just um, type, uh, typists, for example, okay, and they make it of a typewriter. Of course, if, I don't know if you've seen a typewriter before, how it makes a lot of sound and all of that. And then you give these people computers to use. So stuff that they could that would take them longer time using uh, the typewriter is now taking them like. A shorter time, like I'm talking, I'm talking over the over, over a period of time now. Okay, so after some time, you discover that uh, the, your 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 workers, the workers, they are now becoming more productive. So their marginal output is now um, increasing just because the capital thing. So that is what this is uh, telling us. Okay. We do the same thing for K. So to obtain the marginal product of capital, what you just have to do is to find um, the derivative of the output with respect to capital. Coming from this uh, function, so change in y, um, change in k is, is going to be equal to we are differentiating with respect to this. So we have alpha here, so that's what we have on the board alpha a, then k alpha minus 1. Since we are differentiating with respect to capital now, minus 1, then l1 minus alpha. So that is still there, l1 minus alpha. So I want you guys to take cognizance of something. I want you guys to note something. So we have k raised power alpha minus 1 becomes 1 over k raised power 1 minus alpha. So what I want you guys to Notice here is that we have uh, alpha minus one here, and then we have one minus alpha here. So what has happened? Now I'm going to prove that this is as well equal to this. So in essence, one over k raised power one minus alpha is equal to k raised power. You know, from this, this one over five raised power three. So five raised power three become this uh, fraction becomes five raised power minus three. Okay, and that's exactly what happens here. So we have one over k then one minus alpha equals k raised power minus. Okay. Minus into brackets the powers of k. So we have k raised to power, so we have k raised to power minus one and uh, then plus alpha. Minus one plus alpha. So by the time we uh, we arrange that it becomes uh, k raised to power alpha minus one, which is uh, exactly what we have here. So that is to prove that this is as well equal to this. So therefore, we just substitute this for uh, this guy here. So therefore, marginal product of capital is equal to change and is equal to alpha a. L is power 1 minus alpha, then divided by k is power 1 minus alpha here. So, what we already have here. So, making the simplifying whole thing, we have, we have the marginal product of capital equals alpha a, then L over k, everything is power 1 minus alpha. Okay, so this is, look at, uh, we have the same, there is, there is a similar observation here compared to what we have when we uh, did the marginal product of labor. This is labor, okay, here as a numerator. So if uh, there is a way this fraction, this entire fraction can increase, okay, that is that's occur that happens if um, the labor increases, that is the numerator increases or the denominator reduces. So it is kind of uh, remarkable to discover that for the marginal flow of capital to increase, labor has to increase, okay. So it is either capital, the number of capital employed falls. Or the number of labor um, increase. So for this to increase, labor has to. So that is uh, and uh, that is what is um, um that is that's kind of interesting because if you have if you have um if you have a school for example where you have the boards and the teachers and I just like using that example. So if you uh, if you have more boards, okay, or you have more classrooms, I have teachers to handle them. So what is the use of all of those additional uh, capital that you have more classrooms, more boards, and nobody's using them? They are not going to be productive. And they won't be producing uh, anything. The same thing goes for um, a typical firm that's um, that its workers were using the typewriter before, and now you introduced introduce uh, computers to them. All right. So over time, you discover that their speed with the computer and their efficiency increases compared to when they just had a device that only dealt with uh, typing alone. Okay. Should I call that typing or punching? All right. Or uh, um, as uh, as the as the as the case may be. So that is to tell us that if the if there's uh, if you want the 
cap if you want capital to increase in productivity, where there should be an increase in the number of uh, workers that would be handling and uh, those uh, equipment that we handling and the increase or the change in the increase in uh, capital input that we the increase in uh, capital. So thank you very much for seeing this video. If you have any question, please leave them in the comment section. My hope is that you understand all of these concepts uh, very, very well. So any question that's bothering you, please leave them in the comment section. Share this video with your friends, like this video, and subscribe to this channel for more updates. We shall be talking about other things in our subsequent uh, videos. See you next time.